This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. He manages $150 billion in state pension funds. He audits the spending of all state agencies and local governments. He reviews the New York State and New York City budgets. He must approve all state contracts. And he's worried about massive debt and local fiscal stress. And most importantly, he signs my check. He's Thomas DiNapoli, the controller of the state of New York. And he's here this week and next to talk the state of the state, the state of the economy and the budget, local fiscal stress, fiscal cliffs, backdoor debt, Hurricane Sandy, and more. Mr. DiNapoli was named controller in February 2007 and was elected to the position in November 2010. Previously, he had served in the Assembly for 20 years, representing the 16th Assembly District in Northwest Nassau County. Welcome back, Mr. Controller. Doug, it's great to be back. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful way to start the new year. Uh, you know <laughs> what? It really is a pleasure, and it has been nearly a year since yeah. you've been on, so it's yeah. been too long. Yeah. Okay, I've got a campaign ad for you oh, in 2014. Okay. It's called Tom DiNapoli Making History. Let's talk. Okay. On December 17th, 2012, you were in the Senate chamber, and you became part of American electoral history. What was it? Oh, Electoral College. Met to, uh, as was happening all across the country, electors uh, were the ones actually who were voted for uh, at election time. Excuse People me, one that. out of yeah. 538 votes that yeah. actually counted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a nice ceremony. Uh, I'd been an elector uh, four years ago as well. Uh, so there's some formality, you're in the Senate chamber, and uh, there are proceedings and there are motions, and then you actually have uh, paper ballots that are printed out for vice president, for president, and then you uh, go forward, your, your call forward, and there are ballot boxes. And you actually have to put your ballot in the box, one for president, one for vice president, mm -hmm. and at the end of it all, uh, no surprise in New York, the votes were all for Barack Obama for president and Joe Biden for vice president. And it was, you know, a, a uh, you know, it is one of those uh, uh, pinch yourself moments where, mm. you know, when you're a kid, you know, you heard about the electoral college and you know, it's not sure. like going to school. Sure. And there you are. And, and knowing that in state capitals across the country, the same ritual, if I can call it sure. that, is, is taking place. And that's the, the peaceful transfer of power that we have in our it's, country. It's pretty fun. I mean, goosebumps? A little bit of goosebumps. And uh, what's nice about it, uh, is that, uh, and I just got it in the mail the other day at home, they, they, they've mailed back the, the ballots that we used. Nice. So you have that something hey. to Hey, and also you listed in the National Archives forever. I mean, come on. Yeah. And you get VIP seats at the inauguration. Come on, life is good. Well, you know, it, it's, you know, hey, for a little guy from Long Island, not so bad. The other piece of history is your attempt, your office's attempt to open up political transparency in the funding of campaigns, particular corporations. Yeah. And in fact, it is being uh, hailed as a, an innovation, a precedent, a new strategy. On January 3rd, 2013, your office announces a suit in Delaware Chancellor, right. Chancery Court to force Qualcomm to report to its stockholders how it's spending its political money. Explain the background sure. and where you are nationally with sure, this. Sure, sure. Uh, it, it's an important initiative, and I appreciate your, your, your bringing it up. Uh, hopefully it'll be successful. Then we'll see if we make history. Okay. Right? So there's, there's, there's been a lot of concern about uh, political, uh, corporate spending in the political arena. And in the oh, Citizens, Citizens United. United, even more so. Sure. And, 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 but, but before that, Before too. that, too. Sure. But Citizens United just unleashed even more. And some of that money, uh, you see where it goes if it goes to a candidate. Some of it, uh, you don't see if it goes to these other sure. entities that don't have to disclose where they're getting the money from. So there, there are many people that are very concerned about that court decision. Uh, we could argue that. That's a separate discussion. 
I come to it from the perspective of being trustee for the for the New York Common Retirement Fund. And so, you're the sole trustee. Sole trustee in New York. That's our setup. My concern is we invest in, in, in companies and in corporations. We want to be sure that our investments are going to yield a good return for us. That includes uh, knowing how the companies are spending money. So in the case of corporate spending on, in the political arena, you know, we're, and we're talking about the money that comes out of the corporation. We're not talking about a PAC that right, the employees right, voluntarily right. This is, give to. This right. is corporate bottom line dollars. Yep, 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 yep. The question is, if, if you are engaging in that spending, where is the money going? And and. How can we as shareholders make a judgment as to whether or not that's helping our investment? Is it enhancing or is it hurting? Uh, and so we've, like other pension funds and institutional investors, we've been reaching out to those who we have our investment money with. And you've got a substantial amount, or we, I should say, have a substantial amount of money, $380 million in stock. And then that company. Oh, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Well, and we, uh, we're 150 billion. We're all no, over. No, I, I yeah. know you're all over. Yeah, but Qualcomm was one of the companies we reached out to. We're right. the only one. Some companies have voluntarily uh, agreed to disclose the political. So you've system. already made history. We, we, we've had 10, 10 agreements with, with, with companies, and we're, we're hoping for more. Qualcomm had been particularly resistant uh -huh. to, to opening up the information. And uh, th there are other entities that, that, that evaluate disclosure by corporations, something called the Zicklid Index, that Qualcomm actually I know that was Zicklid. Okay, so you know. Fact. Yes, uh, they, they score. So, so we, we said, you know, uh, in, in addition to letter writing and, and engagement in that way or, or shareholder resolution, another way a shareholder can assert uh, a point of view, uh, we uh, are asserting under Delaware law, it's a corporation like many organized under Delaware law, there's something called uh, the uh, privilege or right for shareholders to inspect books and records. And it's never been uh, asserted in a, in a case of trying to get to the, to the answer of, of how money's being spent in the political arena. But we have filed a suit. That's yep. how you do it in the Court of Chancery in Delaware. I, read, I even our, read the filing. It's very interesting. And yeah. it clearly has uh, applicability in all 50 states, depending on what, what their state law is. Well, and, that, and, that's, well. and that's why I, I think the strategy has been getting a lot of attention, because if we're successful here, it, while the case just relates to Qualcomm, sure. obviously it sets a precedent in terms of other sure. corporations. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a very simple request. We want, us, we want to take a look at the books. Are, are you spending this money, and where is it going? Right, very and you're not question. asking to have power to disperse it. You just want to know where it's going. Where is it, where is it going? And what, 50% of all corporate, major corporations in the United States are chartered in Delaware? Oh, it's a big number. It's a big number. So yeah. if you win in Delaware... Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, clearly well, it's going to go beyond the chancery court. And, 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 and if we win with this corporation, obviously other shareholders could do the same with others. And, and the other piece of this, Doug, is that the, the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, they have been looking at having some kind of a, of a nationwide role. I'm hoping that our action will help to spur SEC to move in this direction as well, because you really want an, a nationwide standard. You don't want to have to do shareholder resolution company by company or go to Delaware court one at a time. Uh, so we're hoping the SEC will move in this direction. And, and in well. fact, your, your activities, I mean, we talked about this with you in terms of disclosure in t years yeah, ago, years in ago. fact. Yeah, yeah. And it, it appears to me, looking at the sort of the flow of stuff, this SEC in some way is responding to what you've done in New York State. Well, I think they've been responding. You know, we, we've, we've written al along with many uh, other institutional investors working with the Council on Institutional Investors. Okay, so it's, so it's, it's been more a coalition. than you. Oh, sure. Okay. Absolutely. It's been a coalition asking the SEC to do this. But the SEC, you know, they, they move deliberatively, and, and we, we'll help them. Move. Look, there's so or much, there's so, there's so much money out there now. The corporations, more and more, and 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 it really, I think, raises the question about our whole political system and how 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 people are are, are raising money for campaigns. But but for corporations, they really should be focused on their bottom line, and 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 and, and influencing elections, I think, raises a whole series of issues uh, that. You know, a separate discussion, but at the very least, we should have sunlight on these expenditures, see where they're going. That's how, when you have disclosure, transparency, that's how you can have corporate accountability. And, and this is totally nonpartisan. Oh, it's nothing to do with partisanship. It's just... It's, Absolutely. You have fiduciary responsibility for the shareholders, exactly of which right. you are a major Exactly one. right. Okay. Exactly right. Let's move from Tom DiNapoli making history. I, I want credit for this ad in 2014, because, I mean, come on. It's not o bad. Only if I win. Oh, no, you've got to pay before. I don't trust you, Paul. You all renege. Not Money you. up front. Not uh, you. Money, Money up, up front. front. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back. 
let's go back almost a week to the governor's state of the state speech and all that meant. You're smiling. You're waiting. Okay. He was pretty psyched. I mean, did you ever see the governor that animated, you know, publicly? Too much uh, coffee? He was, he had a lot of energy. I was, yeah. He certainly did. And there Over was, a sustained period of time. Yes. I mean, 70, what was it? 78, 78 I think minutes? 78 minutes. I know. That was a long one. And he kept going. There were lots of spots where you, you almost expected him to stop, then, you know, a crescendo, like after the gun stuff. Yeah. I mean, that would have been perfect. Yeah. But it was like the movie Speed. You know, they <laughs> added one more catastrophe yeah. and one more thing. But all in all, I mean, you're talking about an extraordinarily ambitious agenda, yeah. lots of poetry. Now you got the pros. I mean, you got, you know, let the arm twisting and log rolling begin. You're sitting in the audience. And he's articulating these things. And I'm reading and I'm following it and writing things down. So I'm listening off. Full funding for extended school day and year. Ka-ching. Full day kindergarten for highest need students. Ka-ching. Campaign public finance. Ka-ching. House New York, one billion. Ka-ching. Green Bank Park, one billion. Ka-ching. There's lots of ka-chings here. So you've got billions and several billions. I mean, after all, after a while, it adds up to real money. Yeah. How I know we have to wait for the budget. How real is this? Well, the, and, and the budget plan will show how real it is in, in terms of a time frame. I, you know, I think all of it's real. I don't think the governor would propose. But not a year. But but probably Certainly. not within a year. Certainly probably not. not, not a year. Maybe not even in, within a term. But 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 you do if you do start to set up the programs and the framework, you know, you could certainly set the state on the path. I mean, the problem is, as we've talked about, and unfortunately we still haven't talked about it, we we continue to fall short in terms of our revenues based on projections. The economy is more positive than negative, but very sluggish recovery still. We have unanticipated, uh, you know, costs that come in with Superstorm Sandy, mm -hmm. We're still which waiting. we'll talk about. We're, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it more. We're waiting to see what the Feds will actually do. Um, you know, the, the, so you have you have all these uh, great ideas and important initiatives, but but we, we we don't have the kind of money that we'd like to have to do everything all at once. That's yeah, very clear. Well, I mean, forget about doing everything all at once. They didn't add hardening the subway system, hardening the fuel delivery system, and utilities, strengthening wastewater infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, you need priorities here. I mean, even if well, you take the sure. first two on my list, yeah. full funding for extended school day and year, and public finance alone, alone, are going to be budget busters. Could be. Potentially. But if everybody, yeah, if everybody participates in it, sure, sure, sure. So, so again, it gets back to we'll see what's in the budget plan because he he also said no new taxes. So you know we'll see how the numbers add up. They for better the not sell the Adirondacks. Yeah, I don't think they could do that. No, I they can't do that. But it does get, and I know you want to talk about it at some point. Is 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 the issue of debt? Because some of this will end up being. I want I want to spend a, a lot of time on the issue. Some of, of debt. it will be capital expenditures, okay, which is a more more longer term, and you and you would. You would finance it a different way than just pay, you know paying from the from the budget. Okay, let's 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 get into debt. Debt has been a major. You walked into office in 2007 and started talking about debt, and you started talking about backdoor debt and authority right. reform, etc. Right. And you've issued any number of reports and analyses. And in fact, to my great great shock, yesterday, uh, you know, Monday. Uh, the uh, January 14th, New York Post, after they call it you, you know, incompetent, I mean, all kinds of nasty things that you just smile at. They invite you to do an op-ed piece on debt? It's a new year. It's a new year? <laughs> is, it, is it a new them or a new you? Oh, no, well, it's the same me, probably the same them. Okay. <laughs> Lay out the argument here, and it's a very compelling argument that you make. Talk, talk to us about debt the extent of the debt, the impact of the debt, and the future of the yeah. debt. There's, there's a lot there. And I mean, the real challenge is to get New Yorkers to focus on the question of debt. With all the other issues, very timely, and you went down the list before in the governor's speech, if you raise the issue of New York's debt burden, everybody, you know, it's a snooze. Over. It's a snooze. 
And I know, I know you read our report that we put out, but yes, it's, it's, it's not, not, it's, it's it, not going to be No, it's not bestseller. Yeah, it's not but, bestseller. But, excuse me, but, but it's, it's excellent analysis. Well, because it, we, we, the reality is New York has a very high debt burden. We, we, we calculate state funded debt at like 60, over $63 billion. This is the state, full this faith is just, and credit. This is, this is state, this is the authority. Oh, this is everything. This is, a, this is everything. Yes, yeah, everything. A it's a broader, debt. yeah. And but it doesn't include pension obligations, obviously. No, 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 no. No, just no, 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 pure no. debt. Pure debt. Okay. And and you, when you stack it up with other states, we're second only to California, which is a much larger state, right? And really a we're, mess. We're and really a mess. We're 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 you know like uh, three times beyond the, the the median level. For each New Yorker, we calculate it's about three thousand two hundred and fifty-three dollars per New Yorker in debt. It, so, wh however you measure it, the total debt burden, the per capita debt burden, New York is, is, is at, at the highest or near the highest in terms of debt burden. So what does that mean? It means a couple things. It means that, that we're still paying bills for old choices. Sure. At a time and some poor choices. And some poor choices, Go absolutely. Uh, no question about it. When we cite that in a report, about 13% of that debt burden that went really for operating expenses or budget relief, it should not, you know, wasn't Crazy. tied to a capital asset. Crazy. Exactly. At a time, and you went you went through the list earlier, where we have we have uh, as part of our nor, you know normal planning certain projects in, in mind, the post Sandy environment even more projects in mind, by by still having such a high debt burden, and and what's happening now, uh, and, and credit to this administration, they've done a better job in, in a couple of years of managing this than, than some of the uh, prior administrations, but still, we are we are incurring new debt faster than we are retiring old debt. And, uh -oh. and, de and debt service is is a very fast growing part of our budget. So it's approaching seven billion dollars as a cost. So so when you're still paying for old obligations, uh, it's lim and, and debt service is increasing. It's a problem the MTA has as well. Well, we'll talk about it's that. It's a whole other issue too. It, it it limits at a time that budget dollars are scarce the money that you need for this year's operating expenses. So we need to do a better job as we move forward because there's always going to be debt. Of, of being smarter. And necessarily so. And necessarily so. And you used the word earlier. We must do a better job of prioritizing our, our capital projects. And we, 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 we made a little bit of progress in that regard. The governor has his New York Works right. Task Force. We had proposed a more expansive uh, council, infrastructure council, to look at these issues, tie it to a very long-term capital plan. So, so better planning is part of it. I think Returning the voters to playing a role in all this. Let's is key. let's go yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, there's there's two types of state debt. Yeah. There's the 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 debt that the state issues with its full faith and credit that should go before and does go before the voters. Yeah, general and, obligation. And debt. then there is the authority or backdoor debt, right. which right. which, which is now most of the debt. Which is debt. which is a majority of the debt. But so I let's focus yeah. on the backdoor authority debt because yeah. that's 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 sort of not transparent, and I didn't vote for it, and neither did you. Well, you know now, believe it or not, as you saw in the report. A little over five percent of the debt outstanding was voter approved. Almost all of it is it's the all. back of barn. So and, you're and you talking about ninety-five percent right. of sixty billion dollars. That's right. fifty-seven billion dollars right. of backdoor debt. Yeah. What do you yeah. do? We we got it. We got to change the dynamic. We and, and I think it requires the, a a reform uh, that has to be not just talking about it. You actually have to have a constitutional amendment to restore. Uh, the, the, what had been the, the it really should just not allow back to borrowing. Period. Right. And go back to voter approval and and change. You know, right now it's limited to you can only put one proposition up at a time, and we don't put any up. Right. But but I think if you if you provide for multiple propositions, you know, the, the state constitution I think was very smart. It 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 it, it said that the people would be a good check. On, on what kind of debt's being issued and are we setting the right priorities, making the right choices. I think we need to go back to trusting the voters a little more again. And, At and least I know a the, little the, more. The, I don't trust, the, I don't trust well, any I mean, of us one totally. Of the, one of the arguments is, well, the people will never vote for, 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 for a bond issue or a bond. They do true. once in a while. When they're done right. When it doesn't become a whole laundry list right. of, you know. Right, uh, right, uh, right. Uh, Add-ons. So, so I, think, I think that's important. And, and doing better planning uh, and, and just recognizing that because we, you know, we do have a debt cap on the books, but I mean, do we have one of these, you know, debt crisis, debt limit crisis? Well, when do when do it's we? It's not hit quite the, the same as the federal government, but 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 at the end of the next fiscal year, we will only have. Now wait a minute. Talk about what? What do you mean by fiscal year? Define that for everybody. For, for the state, so it's it's uh, April one to March thirty first. Okay, so we, we'll, we'll now we're in the fiscal thirteen budget now. 
Right, because we're the, we're the last quarter of, of the 12, 13. Year. Okay, so, so this next one is the 13, 14 budget. We, we will only have about $509 million left, which is very little as far as the margin that we could borrow under the existing debt cap. Okay, let's say the, the debt cap stays the same. At some point, you're going to run out of money and you run out of options. Fast. Yeah, run out. Yeah, yeah. Do we do we want to even use the, the the ugly term fiscal cliff? No, no. Okay, because it's no, different. No. It's, it's it's. I mean, we're you know we're not the government. Okay, okay. It's, okay. it's, it's okay. a different. It's I'll different. take it back. I'll take yeah, it back. Yeah, but a lot yeah. of people use that. But okay, we won't do it. You don't need to. Okay. Forget the constitutional amendment. Yeah. You're not going to get it. Well, I mean, what do you need? You, what do you need? Two consecutive legislators, yeah. legislatures, and it goes to the voters. Yep. And it, it says, it, and the Constitution says every 20 years, so it comes up in 2000. Well, no, no, no. That's that, 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 that's for a convention. Well, you yeah, could you could yeah. do with you, within a convention. Well, a convention will open up all kinds. I don't want I don't want it either. But are you going to get two two sessions of the state legislature? You're going to get the voters then to approve this. The voters might if it gets through the le- I think the voters would. I think the voters would. Look, we haven't been able well, to we get, get it through the you, We you haven't know? been able to get them to do it yet, but we you know, we're there to see Okay, let me ask you. I reform. mean, you know politics. I yeah. mean, can we get it through the legislature? You don't know because there's a different dynamic, blah well, blah. Well, but look blah. look at it this way. If if in fact we we bounce up against the that that uh, the statutory debt cap, we're, we're going to have to do some things differently. And and if the alternative is to not withstand the cap, in other words, Pass a law saying, you know, we're, we're going to put that cap aside for now. Right. I'm not sure that's something the legislature will want to do. So I think the, the, the notion that there needs to be a smarter way to manage debt, we propose a different way to, to, to do the cap and do a constitutional, I think maybe we, we could get some interest on this. And I'm hoping, you know, the good government groups that talk about many other issues, that they'll, they'll pick up on debt as well. What about the governor's office? I mean, you, you, don't you need the, the muscle of the uh, chief executive it would certainly, behind it? Would it? Certainly help. It would certainly help. Yeah, yeah. I'm there's a little the plaintive. There's I'm a always, little plaintiveness I'm always there. The, I'm always I know the you're smiling to me. Optimist. You're smiling to me. Okay, let's talk about local fiscal stress, yeah. which relates both to local debt, which is skyrocketing, right. and pension costs, which are skyrocketing. So you've got you've got counties, you've got municipalities, you got towns, you got villages Cities. that are really, yep. really hurting. They're they're they're, they're over debt much worse than the state in terms of the disparities, and they've got all these massive pension. What it is, I, I'm looking at it, it, it is at least conceivable that you could have some localities go into bankruptcy, and what happens? And we don't want that to happen. No! We and don't want that to happen. Suppose if you have but, but there five are, going into bankruptcy. It would be the worst possible outcome. And, and But you're seeing in other states, you're seeing this trend. You know, California, you've seen more than one yeah, municipality. Excuse me, but that's sort of a, a, a bad role model here, Tom. Well, we don't, we don't want to go down that road. Right, now how do you prevent yeah. going yeah. down that road? Well, you know, first of all, in New York, we do have a different history. We, we've not allowed for bankruptcy. Mm. And and when, when a city or a county has, has really gone into severe stress, We've had control boards because New York City still has a control board. Right, you uh, and, and, and you yeah. have the uh, you uh, on it. Uh, and and um, Nassau County, where I live, ha- has a control board. That's right. What we don't want is a control board everywhere. So what we're really trying to suggest with the monitoring system we proposed, it's really in effect an early warning system by by having certain indicators of 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 the budget and finances of of the locality. To really identify, we, we we look at this information already with the reports we sure. get. Sure, but to set up sort of the rating it, it right. But we want should. we want the public to be. Aware. No, I understand. We, we, so I understand. We, we, we want to categorize yep. it, put it out there, transparent way for the public. Are you in a community that's a municipality that's that's emerging, uh, has emerging fiscal stress, is in fiscal stress, is severe fiscal stress? We have different categories as a way to ensure an earlier intervention. Yeah, it's if pretty there needs rigorous. To be one. I mean, yeah. it's not without, you know. But it's really, it's really meant to spark right. at the local level right. the decisions and the solutions earlier. Sure. We don't, bankruptcy would be the worst possible outcome. Oh, and, we, and, 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 and a cascade. You talking about the domino effect, that would be a Well, it would, undermine the, it would undermine the municipal credit markets. It would have, a, it would have St- very state negative State and effect. perhaps national. But, you know, d- you know D- Dick Ravitch and Paul Volcker just yep. put out a report. Uh, we're going to talk years. about it. Yeah, so, I mean, th- th- we're not going to be out of the woods for a while in terms of municipal stress. You're talking, I mean, if you, when, when, you, when we talk about the, uh, the Ravitch Volcker report, it's really... The problems are really long term. Well, and, and I think and the solutions point. are long term. It's it's been emerging which isn't over good politically. It's been emerging over a period of time, exacerbated by the Great Recession, and because this recession is different than others, it's not a quick turnaround. 
you can't really view it as just part of a cyclical change. It's, it's probably a more permanent change. It's systemic. It's, it's a new reality. Yeah, yeah. it's systemic. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, the governor mentioned in the state, of the state speech about dealing with local government stress. It was only a sentence, and he talked about the attorney general, state budget officials, uh, the controller, and outside experts. What, did, what, are we, what are we talking about here? Are these the analysts that you'd have some kind of almost interagency task force to evaluate fiscal yeah. stress? Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't met yet following the speech, but I, I think what's intended is when you, where you, when you have a, a municipality that's in severe stress, it would almost be like an intervention team to come in and, and try to help with the restructuring. Okay, that's what I'm asking. It's yeah. not only analysis that this stress exists, but... It sounds like almost like a fiscal SWAT team that comes yeah. into a jurisdiction and, yeah. you know, does a thorough. Yeah. Do other jurisdictions do this type of flying expertise squad? You know, in other states, you, you sometimes you actually have, depending on the trigger, uh, a takeover. You know, oh, where, yeah. Where well, someone's appointed as like a fiscal overseer. Well, I mean, Michigan, they went crazy. Yeah, so they, they so it's not quite at that level. But, it, but you know, look, the, lo the locals are... They would like more more money coming from the state. The state doesn't exactly have a lot of money oh, to give. Or mandate relief is often talked about, but once you get into the detail of which mandates, you know, suddenly... We need to talk about mandate relief because the governor didn't mention it with good reason. Well, he has a mandate relief council, and, right. and there's been some criticism that they haven't put too much forward. Uh, but you're right, like health care costs go up, pension costs go up. Pension costs we expect to start to stabilize now that the markets seem to be holding up pretty well for us. But, but the locals feel, and, and obviously with some justification, there, there's so much out of their control. Sure. And, and it's year after year. And now. it's onerous. It really is, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to figure out some I mean, I was, I've been on a school board in New Jersey, and, and, and even there, forget it. I yeah. mean, come on, give me a break. We yeah. know better than you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is your news-making opportunity. What are you working on? What, 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 what little nuggets can you share with us? Oh, boy, there's so many big issues. Oh, I'm yeah. But, I want but, one. But we are very concerned about the, the gun issue, and New York is taking a leadership. That's not news. Area. I want news. Well, news is going to be that we're 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 going to freeze uh, any investments that we have related to a company whose primary line of work is uh, gun manufacture. So that certainly is news. Okay. Okay. It's always a pleasure. But you're coming back. We'll yeah. stop right now. Okay. Thanks to controller Tom DiNapoli for joining us this week. He has agreed in his infinite wisdom to return next week to continue this conversation here on CUNY TV. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email, whatever it is. Thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it, send it.